Hey everyone, in the news this week, singer R. Kelly got sentenced to 30 years in jail and Ghislaine Maxwell got 20 years in jail. It's another disgusting example of a woman being given less for doing the same work as a man. In Ukraine, they've urged the world to respond after a Russian ship left Berdyansk with 7,000 tonnes of stolen grain. Vladimir Putin said they corn have it back. Corn? is a type of grain. Anyway, after the railway workers, apparently barristers are going to be going on strike, and that presumably means that it's going to be more dangerous to go up and down the stairs this summer. But anyway, this week it's the 4th of July, so I thought we'd have a little look at the current insanity that's swept over America. There's a set of important elections coming up later in the year, and the Democrats were expected to lose so badly that some of them actually welcomed the recent Roe v. Wade decision, simply because it finally gave them a platform to actually campaign on that might get them some votes. The ongoing fallout from that decision, by the way, continues to, of course, demonstrate hypocrisy at the highest order, with examples of my body, my choice, town hall meetings where to take part you have to show proof of vaccination. The corporate response has, of course, been largely cynical. A number of corporations have been very public about how they'll stump up the cost for a woman, for instance, in Texas or Utah to travel out of state. Although then I read an article about how this is largely because paying for an out-of-state abortion is cheaper than the company having to pay for maternity leave. Anyway, presiding over all this is sleepy Uncle Joe Biden, who looks set to add the House and the Senate to the list of things he's lost, which currently includes his authority and his marbles. A recent photo showed him holding a cheat sheet which explained how to sit in a chair and reminding him to say hello to people. It's the sort of thing you give to a six-year-old. I personally know people who saw him at a rally two years ago and responded by not voting for anyone because even then it was clear that he had serious cognitive decline. You almost feel sorry for him were it not for the fact that he and his family have spent the last half century grifting and lining their pockets from the public purse in a way that even the Clintons must think is a bit corrupt and unseemly. In the meantime, of course, the news media continues to place the blame for everything elsewhere, whether it's Russia or Covid or billionaires not paying taxes. And it's certainly not the president, though, who displays a level of surreal incompetence that makes you half wonder if it's really a character being played by Rowan Atkinson. In the real world, of course, nobody cares what his defenders like CNN or NBC say because fewer people watch the news these days after it spent years liquidating its authority with a witch hunt about how Donald Trump was secretly a KGB spy or how green energy was going to be very cheap and very reliable if people would just lie down and let the politicians get on with running things for them. Energy could be cheap and reliable again if Biden agreed to let the oil companies replace those Russian imports by drilling at home or by building a pipeline or at the very least not continuing to regulate what's left of existing infrastructure into the ground. Five US refineries have closed in the last two years, despite claims that there are allegedly licenses to print money. The US was a net energy exporter until very recently, but the people that benefit from cheap energy are the sort of people that Biden's friends call a basket of deplorables, and when it comes to the environment, ideological obstructionism is all that counts. All their friends think the same, so therefore it must be true and the ends always justify the means. It's a pretty terrifying prospect, therefore, if the Ukraine war were to come to an end pretty soon and prices didn't come down, and people suddenly realised what was going on and started paying attention to how the myriad of problems at home are one of the few things that do still come with a label stating, quote, made in America. Anyway, see you next week. Fly these clothes as well.